In today's video, I want to take you guys through a plethora of different things. Specifically, some awesome remasters have been revealed for the PlayStation 4. I should say, in the case of one of them, it's just been rated for the PS4, but usually that ultimately does lead to a reveal and then an announcement or release, everything like that, and it's a really great one. Saints Row the Third has also gotten its official reveal. That was another game that I believe was rated, rumored quite a bit, but now we know that it is coming, and it'll be coming relatively soon. And I want to round out this video by taking a look at a lot of great PS4 for game deals that are available on Amazon and Best Buy. Some really good ones, so we'll let you guys know about that in just a little bit. But first of all, here's something I am super excited for. Mafia 2 Definitive Edition and Mafia 3 Definitive Edition have been rated for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC in Taiwan. The Taiwan Digital Game Rating Committee has rated Mafia 2 Definitive Edition for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, as well as Mafia 3 Definitive Edition for PS4, Xbox One, and PC, which is kind of interesting given that Mafia 3 was a current generation game. I imagine that they're just going to bundle in the DLC and everything like that. The news comes following a rating for Mafia 2 Definitive Edition for unspecified platforms by the Korea Game Rating and Administration Committee, and that happened back on April 4th, so this is incredibly exciting. Mafia 3, I talked about that game quite a bit. I liked the game. It was a little bit of a disappointment to, uh, to me, but when I talk about Mafia 3, I often talk about the excellence of Mafia 2, and Mafia 2 was such an awesome game that, unfortunately, a lot of people missed out on. Now, the difference with Mafia 2 comparatively to Mafia 3 was Mafia 2 was a much more linear experience. It, it did have a little bit of an open world to it, but much more linear than the full-blown open world that Mafia 3 had, and I actually think that was so much more advantageous to the case and the gameplay of Mafia 2 going into the release of Mafia 3. My simple mind was just thinking, oh, you're taking Mafia 2 and you're dropping it in an open world. Mafia 3 is going to be awesome, but then when you actually played Mafia 3, there were some other issues with it, but I think that open world did more harm than good with the gameplay. Mafia 2 is just awesome. You play as Vito Scaletta, and he has started to make a name for himself on the streets of Empire Bay as someone who can be trusted to get the job done. Together with his buddy Joe, he is working to prove himself to the Mafia, quickly escalating up the family ladder with crimes of larger reward status and consequence. The life as a wise guy isn't quite as untouchable as it seems. You've got action-packed gameplay in there as well, and the story and voice acting and character development is one of the strongest elements of Mafia. I think it always has been. The voice acting especially, I think, is tremendous. Storytelling is really good, and the fact of the matter is, this is a game that I think so many people missed out on on the PlayStation three for whatever reason i don't think it really clicked from a commercial standpoint it even didn't click that hard from a critical standpoint a 77 on metacritic which is respectable enough but to me this game did deserve a higher score and i really enjoyed my time with mafia 2 and i think for those of you that have never played it i do think you're in for a treat does it have the best visuals in the world no it came out back in like 2010 2011 so obviously a little bit more dated but it was a great game and honestly one of those underrated games that i always go back to and i think deserves a rematch deserves a second win, whatever the case may be, and hopefully it does well enough and sets up the table for Mafia 4 to ultimately happen. I know that's probably going to happen at some point. The wait between Mafia games is usually a little bit lengthy, but hopefully Mafia 2 comes out and people really enjoy that. Also, Mafia 3 Definitive Edition. I imagine that that's just going to be a re-release of Mafia 3, given that that came out on the PlayStation 4, so what more can you really do to it? I don't know if they're looking to make gameplay refinements or anything like that. Probably throw in the DLC, because I do believe there's a bevy of DLC available for Mafia 3. I'll actually let you guys know about that right now. Yeah, there is a digital deluxe edition. There's a season pass and there's quite a bit of DLC uh, from my recollection. It's been a long time so I didn't quite remember if there was a bevy of DLC, but there was and that's probably going to be included in the definitive edition. Will also be very interesting to see where they price this at. Mafia 2 I think should be priced at $19.99 or $29.99 at the absolute most. Mafia 3 I guess you could go a little bit higher, maybe $29.99 to $39.99, but really they should be priced accordingly, especially Mafia 2, given that it is a little bit more dated, and I think more so than anything, you just want people to play that game. Obviously, you need to make a profit, but what is the undertaking of creating Mafia 2 Definitive Edition on PlayStation 4? I don't think it's all too significant, and if they can price it at $20, I think that would be great, and a lot of people would really dig that. More likely than not, probably a $30 price point, given that it still goes for an MSRP of $30 on Steam, so I imagine that they're going to try to hit that as well. All right, also another pretty cool remaster, Saints Row the Third Remastered announced for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Publisher Deep Silver has announced Saints Row the Third Remastered for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC via the Epic. Game Store, which is rather interesting because Saints Row the Third is already available. I don't know what kind of graphical improvements this is really going to make, but nonetheless, it will be an EGS exclusive. It'll be coming May 22nd for 
$29.99. Eh, I do not know about that price point. Honestly, this one should be $19.99 to $29.99 as well. PC sales for this game, if you get Saints Row the Third on sale, you could get it for like five bucks, probably cheaper than that. I feel like it's been a part of a humble bundle where it's been down to like a dollar, so $39.99 is a little bit of a hard sell. I don't really know about that one, but Saints Row the Third is an updated and enhanced version of the 2011 released original developed in cooperation with uh, Spearsoft. The remastered version boasts retextured environments, character models, and visual effects, enhanced graphics with a new lighting engine, and includes all three expansion packs and more than 30 pieces of downloadable content from the original game. So it is a sizable improvement by the looks of it. Again, I think the price should have capped out at $29.99, $39.99. Uh, that's just a little bit too hefty for me, my liking, but you guys know how, how I am. I'm probably the cheapest gamer on YouTube these days. Saints Row the Third Remastered gives you control of the Saints at the height of their power, and you live the life to show for it. This is your city. These are your rules. Remastered with enhanced graphics. Steelport, the city of a sin, has never looked so good as it drowns in sex, drugs, and guns. Years after taking Stillwater for their own, the Third Street Saints have evolved from street gang to household br uh, brand name with Saints sneakers, Saints energy drinks, and Johnny Gat bobblehead dolls all available at a store near you. The Saints are kings of Stillwater, but their celebrity status has not gone unnoticed. The Syndicate, a legendary crime criminal fraternity with pawns in play all over the globe, has turned its eye on the Saints and demands tribute. Again, the key features note, the full package, remastered, enhanced graphics, better lighting, visual effects, and the city has never looked so good. Over-the-top cooperative play as well, and all three expansion packs and more than 30 pieces of downloadable content thrown in there as well. At $39.99. I think some people are going to be all over it, giving the zaniness and wackiness of Saints Row the Third. It's a pretty iconic game, and it's cool to see it on the PS4. I'm always going to be of the mindset, can we get it a little bit cheaper, though? So shoot me for it. I don't care. That's just my opinion. Still excited to see it come to the PS4 come May 22nd. All right, lastly, I do want to quickly take you guys through a bevy of deals available on Amazon as well as Best Buy. We're going to have to get through this relatively quickly since I don't want to keep you guys forever. Bayonetta and Vanquish 10th Anniversary Bundle Launch Edition is $10 off for $29.99. Really good deal on this. This came out just earlier this year, I believe. Yeah, earlier this year, back in February for $19.99. For $29.99, it's even better. I should say it was $39.99 for the collection, $19.99 a pop for each game. So at $29.99, you're essentially getting each game for $15, and you get that six steel book rounding out the collection. Vanquish is an awesome game. I'm sure you guys are abundantly aware of Bayonetta, so definitely give that a look. Also, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, $20 off for $39.99. Pretty good deal on this. I've been pretty vocal in saying that Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is a game that you're going to enjoy if you're a Dragon Ball fan. Fundamentally and objectively assessing it as an RPG, it's pretty mediocre in all regards, but it's really enhanced by the benefits of that DBZ aesthetic, and that's going to be the main drawing factor for a lot of you guys, enhancing it from a mediocre RPG to a really engaging one. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch Remastered is down to $29.99. Very good JRPG if you're a fan of Nino Kuni 2. You're going to like Nino Kuni 1 a lot. I thought it was the stronger game, and to have it on the PS4, obviously, that's really nice. Shadow of the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition is down in 1999. Fantastic buy on this. SOTR wasn't my favorite of the Tomb Raider trilogy, probably the weakest, but it's still a very good game. I still thought that there was a lot to like. The benefit of this is you get all the DLC content, which was one of the main imperatives that I talked about going into the release of this game. The lack of so much of that content being locked behind a season pass, that was just not something Thing I dug, but now all of that content, base game 1999, definitely check that one out. Greedfall is down to $29.99. This was one of the more underrated RPGs of 2019. I thought it was pretty good. I thought Spiders did a good job with the game. You have to take it for what it is, though. It's not a big budget RPG necessarily, like a Witcher 3 or anything like that. But Spiders is getting incrementally better with every one of their game releases, and I think Greedfall was their strongest game yet. It was a good game. I'm excited what they can do for their next RPG because if they improve upon Greedfall, I think we're really hitting the territory of their putting out great RPGs, and I think they're just on the cusp of that. All right, next up, Dishonored 2 is down to $9.70. Pretty good buy on that as well. I thought Dishonored 2 was a great game. Good improvement upon Dishonored 1 while retaining the fundamentals that made that game so good. Nine bucks and 70 cents. Hell yeah, that's a good deal. Lastly, do want to cover a couple of deals on Best Buy. Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age Standard Edition is down to $19.99. 
another very good JRPG, one that's relatively lengthy. Get a lot of content for your money, and the fact of the matter is at $20, it is an exceptional buy from Square Enix. I know a lot of you guys are going to be busy with your JRPGs with FF7 Remake later this week, but DQ11 is still a really good one. And speaking of DQ, Dragon Quest Builders 2 is $19.99 over on Best Buy as well. This came out relatively recently, all things considered, like nine months ago, and it was holding up in price for quite a while, but now for $20, I think this is a pretty good pickup as well. Some people will say it's Dragon Quest in Minecraft, and I can see the comparison, but it definitely has a lot more nuances to it than that. A little bit of a story there as well, and uh, for fans of Dragon Quest, you're going to like the look of the game, and there's a lot of longevity to the title as well, so for 20 bucks, I think it's a good buy. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, very excited for Mafia 2 Definitive Edition. Mafia 3 Definitive Edition looks to also be happening, but Mafia 2 in particular, very excited for that to come to the PS4. Saints Row the Third Remastered coming to the PS4. That is going to be something that I think will be a good release. However, maybe one to wait on a sale for and a bevy of deals. Again, I'll leave the links to those in the description box below as always. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.